Wonderland 4 is one of those GBA games that people loved. It's usually one of the most mentioned Wario games besides smooth moves. Usually a pipe dream for nostalgia. Many see it as a gem for the GBA. So what's the story? A lost pyramid has surfaced, and of course treasure hunters are bound to come up and loot the joint. One of the treasure hunters is Wario, whose objective is to take all the treasure he comes across. Nothing too terribly deep, let alone nothing too extraordinary, but for a treasure hunting story, it says just enough for the kind of character Wario is. Well, besides fat. There are five passages, technically six, which usually follow a treasure-like name, aside from the first one being the entry passage, the topaz, sapphire, emerald, ruby, and golden passages. And through each passage, of course, is a different set of stages which do a fairly decent job of giving a subtle message of the bosses at the end of the passage. The stages in Wario Land 4 range from pretty basic to outright labyrinth-like in the sort. WHERE AM I GOING?! Ugh! WHAT?! But even with the stages so labyrinth-like, there is something that balances it out. At the end of every stage, there is a frog switch. Once activated, you have a limited amount of time to get out of the stage. Not only that, but in some stages, there is an alternate path for you to take. Sometimes you can't go in the same way you started. Sometimes you need to take an alternate route, which is not only further expands exploration, but it also does expand replay value due to the fact that the more labyrinth-like stages have such a big atmosphere to them that it provokes curiosity. Speaking of simple, the first stage does right what every first stage should do, and that is to teach the player how to play the game. It not only does this wonderfully, it does this in such a way that I would call it a step in a different direction. Since at first, you not only grasp the dash attack, but you soon learn to rush, which not only gets stronger with distance and speed, but it has a different impact when jumping. Same with the ground pound, the higher you are, the more devastating a landing you'll perform while also paralyzing your enemies. However, each stage does indeed have a gimmick, and they all are refreshing. Sometimes it's a certain enemy who tip makes up the gimmick, a new ability makes it up, or in the last stage is that you are limited on time. The gimmicks do feel forced on certain stages, while in others it's completely optional. Sadly, the enemies of the game don't really put up much of a fight in World 1. It was expected that they be simple, though in every other world, the challenging enemies are so minor or in places that ask for you to get hurt. <laughs> With this being said, the music for each stage rather suits them quite well, though I'd argue the Topaz stage themes are rather forgettable, though, which is a shame since the game's soundtrack is rather bewitching. The most well known, of course, is the first stage of the Emerald Passage, due to it being an actual lyrical song, being performed on the GBA, though there is also extra tracks that can be found in CDs that you collect on each stage that play extra tracks. Nerr, what the hell? As for the bosses, which some are actually challenging, others can be annoying, though I do believe this setup how most of the bosses are. WHAT THE FUCK?! Before each boss match, you can purchase certain items to help you out against the boss, though you need a certain type of cash that you don't get in the normal stages. Where do you get these kind of cash? To play mini games. In order to play these mini games, you need to pay for them. Once you paid, you have to play the mini game, and at random, sometimes if you pass your old high score, you'll get this coin. Once this coin is received, then you can keep playing until you lose eventually. 
While I only get use the items twice, once to show it off in my walkthrough and another for this review, I must prefer to fight the bosses without a handicap, though it is optional and it isn't mandatory, which is something I like. Though there is a catch to this, in the background there are treasure chests. This does actually alter your game's ending. Wireland 4 has four game endings. Subtle. It all depends on how many chests remain in the final boss. Since there's... Go. And once you kill the boss, while all the remaining chests go. Of course, now comes the last stage. Oh Jesus Christ, this stage is difficult! Ah! If you screw up once, it's game over! But to the game's credit, you expect this sooner or later. Plus, the stage is big enough for you to explore completely. It isn't only the end of the line, but it does put everything you learn from the game to the test. It's a perfect way to end all the stages. The final boss is... Eh, honestly, she is actually one of the worst in the game. The reason is that she isn't too direct and doesn't try to stop you. Until the last three hits, anyway. Her moveset is predictable, and we know what moves she has in store next. There is nothing to really be worried about with this boss. Though, the first phase is a time eater. If one of her heads touches you, it's over. Just wasted probably 5 out of 15 seconds at the top of the screen. Once defeat, then comes the ending. Wario gets a kiss from the princess who's actually in the game. But the whole time, though, her appearance was subtle and, well, hard to detect. Seriously, I didn't think it was her at first when I seen it. Well, not the cat. She is also... well... That's what I call a good mask! By the way, her name is Princess Shokora. I'm pretty sure I pronounced that wrong. Which is the Japanese approximation for the French word chocolate. Kinky. Then she vanishes with her angels and Wario goes home. Well, now comes the big question. Is this game good? Certainly. Though the biggest drawback is the enemies for me, but aside from that, it is a rather blast of a time. The music is excellent, the levels are on a right scale of easy and difficult, the graphics look astonishing, and you can tell there was a lot of effort put into this for an early GBA game, though be warned that the enemies are a joke as well as the story isn't too deep. Does it live up to its legacy? Yes. Is it worth the purchase? Depends on how much you are willing to spend on it.